Stan Jibalisco here to discuss the fundamental differences between nickel-based and lithium-based rechargeable batteries. Uh, these days, lithium-based batteries have pretty much universally replaced nickel-based batteries in portable and mobile devices such as cell phones and tablet uh, devices like the iPad on which I'm recording this video. Um, the fundamental difference between the two is uh, simply a matter of improved technology with the lithium-based batteries and you need to treat them a little bit differently. If you have an old cell phone or an old uh, notebook computer or tablet device you might still find a nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride type of battery in that thing. Um, nickel cadmium is the oldest technology and it was subject to a phenomenon known as memory drain in which um, if you repeatedly charged the battery up and then only partially discharged it and kept on doing that over and over again um, supposedly the battery would remember only the extent of the charge that you'd given it and would think that that was all it could handle uh, consequently the capacity of the battery would appear to be reduced or would be would in effect be reduced the milliampere hours or ampere hours would be reduced you could supposedly restore such a battery by fully charging and then fully discharging it several times. Uh, I've read conflicting reports about that phenomenon. Some people claim it's for real, others claim it they have a hard time forcing it to happen even under experimental circumstances, but uh, that is the one of the big bugaboos about that battery. That said, uh, when I first moved out here to the black holes of Dakota Toritary uh, in South Dakota, USA, I uh, decided I'd probably better have a cell phone uh, because I was going to be traversing long stretches of highway with unpopulated regions. Some of those regions still are out of cell phone range on Interstate 90 in western South Dakota. But in any case, I bought this thing called a track phone, and that was in 2003. And it had a nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride, I'm not sure which, battery in it. Would you believe that that thing still works? It still works. And it appears to still have capability of operating for quite a while before it runs out of a charge. Uh, so I, I remember once getting some extra minutes on that cell phone and the person at Walmart who provided those extra minutes said, oh I wish I had one of these old things. It was a Nokia phone. It wasn't a smartphone, it was a stupid phone. Stupid enough for fuddy-duddies like me. You didn't have to be a programmer in order to um, in order to run the thing. It didn't have a camera. It didn't have the ability to tell you how often you had to go to the bathroom or when you should eat your meals. It didn't have the capability of informing you that such and so wanted to get a hold of you every five minutes. You weren't you weren't a slave to the bloody thing. Uh, uh, to this day, I hardly ever use it except in emergencies. Uh, that all the way to the modern range of lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. Uh, they uh, do not exhibit memory drain and as a matter of fact uh, it's advised uh, by most uh, sources that I've consulted that it's not a good thing to charge them up to 100 percent or to discharge them to zero. Uh, better to never charge it to more than 90 percent or let it go down to less than 10. Uh, 
Um, it isn't going to destroy the, uh, it isn't going to necessarily do permanent damage to the battery to do either of those things, although um, a battery comprises several cells in series. For example, uh, if you have a 6-volt lantern battery, uh, presumably four 1.5-volt, uh, say, zinc carbon or alkaline cells in series with with lithium polymer and nickel metal hydride, the voltages are a little different, but it comprises a number of cells connected in series. And those cells don't always charge and discharge equally. And over time, the extent of charge of each individual cell may vary uh, from cell to cell in a battery. And that dis disparity will increase as time passes. Uh, so periodically, uh, you can consult uh, various internet sources and get various opinions about that kind of thing. I've never had a big, big issue with those kind of rechargeable batteries. I've tried to be reasonably kind to them and uh, be, you know, just fairly sane in my treatment of them. Uh, that said, uh, you've, you may have heard of nickel or uh, rather lithium batteries blowing up, uh, injuring or even killing their users. The cell phone that blows up in somebody's head and, and causes a fatal uh, injury, things like that. From what I understand, if you properly treat a lithium battery, um, and if you get a good one, and not some bogus imitation, uh, which... Uh, the, the cheaper brands which make exorbitant claims about their milliampere hour or ampere hour capacities, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Those are, uh, as I understand it, the, the type that are more likely to blow up. Uh, if you leave a battery plugged into its uh, charger for an extended period of time, uh, normally, the battery is supposed to regulate itself so that it can't overcharge, but it, in some cases, cheap chargers or cheap batteries uh, will malfunction, and there are documented cases of them catching on fire. There are even videos showing, uh, showing them catching on fire and things like that. But if you buy a good brand, a reputable brand, and a reputable good brand of charger, preferably one designed specifically for the battery and the device that you're using, and you don't uh, get, you know, you obey the, the rules of reason with the things, uh, chances are that you're not going to get your face burned beyond all recognition, or your, your brain isn't going to explode, your hand isn't going to be burned off, or if you have it in your pocket, uh, you aren't going to be rendered uh, incapable of fathering uh, children if you're a man for the rest of your life. Enough said, Stanley. I think that probably just about covers it. The more modern technologies of lithium are generally superior in terms of the amount of energy they can store and the length of time for which they can deliver it per unit mass. Um, Yet, to this day, the super battery has yet to be developed. Even the very best batteries, in terms of energy density, are only a small fraction of the energy dens density available from good old-fashioned gasoline, or, if you live on the other side of the pond, petrol. Maybe we should, fi we should uh, design a gasoline battery powered notebook computer with Windows 11 on it. That, that'd be my next brainstorm. A gasoline or petrol powered tablet device with a Windows 11 operating system. Stan Jubilisco signing off until well, I will never regain my sanity. So until next time, so long.